All right, guys, I'm we'll doing a step-by-step -step how to transmission swap for a 6R80 for a 09 to 14 F-150. This is a 13 Raptor we're doing it on. Uh, it's a 6R80 4x4 transmission. Should be the same for any of those your model F-150s with the V8 engine package. The first steps are, of course, Get your truck up on some jack stands, get it up off the ground some so you can get underneath it and work on it. Make sure it's nice and secure. You don't wanna, once it's up on jack stands, you wanna give it a good shake and make sure it stays stable because you're gonna be shaking on it when you're underneath moving the transmission around and stuff. You'd rather it fall now and damage something with the extended jack stand than have it fall on you and hurt you or kill you. So check first, be grateful later. You can disconnect the battery now or later whenever you go to start actually removing the transmission later in the process I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my battery now so I don't have to worry about it and then you remove drive shafts next let's get to it all right so the first thing we gotta do is disconnect the front sway bar from the front because it blocks the Y pipes and the front drive shaft from being able to be pulled out. So we pull off the front sway bar, remove the front and rear drive shaft, and then remove the exhaust. Let's get to it. Rear drive shaft is simple and straightforward. You got four 12.12 millimeter bolts at the rear axle. Follow up to the front, it's just a slip yoke. So when you undo those four bolts at the back, it'll drop down from the differential and you just slide the whole drive shaft to the rear of the truck and it comes out of the transfer case. Once your bolts are out, you may have a drive shaft that's stuck to the flange. Take your pry bar on either side here. Make sure you're supporting the drive shaft so it doesn't fall on your head. And give it a little pop and it should pop off with just a little bit of effort. If the pry bar doesn't work, Hit it with your purse. Hit it right here. Just like that. Pop loose. Take the whole drive shaft. Slide it backwards. And it's out of the truck. This truck has already had some work being done to it. So the front drive shaft is already out of it. So we're gonna take the front sway bar out. It needs sway bar end links anyway. They're destroyed. So we're just gonna remove these brackets and let it hang. If you have good sway bar end links, you'll want to unbolt them from either up here or down here in the control arm and remove the whole sway bar assembly and get it out of your way. These are 15 millimeter nuts up here. You'll want deep well for those. You notice there is an extra nut on this bar right here. There's a couple heat shields under here you'll have to remove as you go along. That was one of the things that was already removed. So once you get those five nuts off of the sway bar brackets, Sway bar bracket will drop down just like so. Like I said, if your in links are good, unbolt them first. Sway bar's got some weight to it, don't let it pop you in the head. On both sides, you have a two bolt bracket that goes with the five nuts. There, and if it likes to play nice, there we go. Grab it. Keep those together you can keep them in the frame if you want or set them to the side now would be a good time to also remove your skid plate for your evap system there'll be two bolts here on your cross member and two bolts on your frame they are 13 millimeter bolts remove your exhaust two bolts either side of this pipe and slide it out of the hangers. Stock exhaust, aftermarket exhaust, your mileage may vary. It is somewhere around this point that you want to go ahead and get your trans jack into position. In our case, we put a two by four in the front to space out the difference from the oil pickup pump that's sticking out the bottom, just to help keep the trans level on the jack. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through, we've got four O2 sensors one there, one there, one, where is it? 
there and one up there the, the, the connectors are back here on the transmission follow the wires from the O2 sensors themselves back to the connectors and disconnect them This is one of your sensors. These are not in their proper locations. This is the driver's side. This is your other sensor, O2 sensor connector. On the driver's side, your two oxygen sensor connectors are right here. This white one and this black one. The black one will be clipped into these two holes right here. The white one, I'm unsure of its position, but to press that button there and pull the two parts two pieces apart like that on the black one it's going to be on the underside where you can't see it it's right there Let's press that and those two will pop apart like that do the same on the passenger side your four header to y pipe bolts two on each side are 15 millimeter you will need at least a semi deep if not a deep well a universal and a good length extension the longer the better the easier it is to reach you'll probably need an impact and if you've been on for your four header to y pipe bolts two on each side are 15 millimeter you'll need at least a semi deep if not a deep well a universal and a good length extension the longer the better the easier it is to reach you'll probably need an impact now that the Y pipe nuts are off, we're going to take off two 18 millimeter nuts from the bottom of the transmission cross member that goes up to the bracket that holds the transfer case. Now remove your four cross member bolts. Two here, two there. 15 millimeter bolt heads, 18 millimeter nuts on the other side. On driver's side, it'd be easier to use an 18 millimeter box end wrench on this one as it's too close to the exhaust for most socket and ratchet combinations to get into, much less an impact. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to remove your 10 millimeter bolt from your heat shield, like I did, or it's gonna hang up the whole thing. There's also one here from an already removed heat shield. Now that the cross member's out, we're gonna remove this bracket. There's two 15 millimeter bolts on each side that bolt it to the transfer case. On driver's side, you have to remove this 15 millimeter bolt before you can remove these. That will release this half of the hanger. When you get that bolt loose, the top half of this clip comes off. These are exhaust hanging there and over there another hanger. When you undo these two bolts, this bracket and the Y pipe will come down together. Be ready for it. You also have an O2 sensor on the passenger side running through this heat shield. If, when you go to drop your Y pipe, make sure you don't bind that up and cut your O2 sensor wires. If you want to, you can go ahead and try and remove it from the exhaust. Sometimes it's easier just to leave it there and fish it through. There are nine of those e torques holding the transfer case to the transmission. In order to get to the top two more easily, you can lower your jack. Do not lower all the way. You don't want to hang the entire transfer case, transmission, and engine assembly from the engine mounts. That's too much stress on them. It will wear them out quicker if it doesn't completely destroy them. So let it down a little bit. Just enough to give yourself some room up top to access those two on top. As you undo the top two bolts, you're going to want to support the transfer case I like doing it with my knee because I can fit underneath here with the way I've got it jacked up. You can use a jack stand or another jack. Just know that when those two bolts come out, it will rotate. So be ready for it. But I put my knee here and I use my spare hand here underneath the tail shaft. I come up here and once they're broken loose, you can take them out by hand. And I get my other knee prepared to hold this side of it because it's going to want to come off. Once you get those top two bolts out, it's going to hang off the output shaft of the transmission. Get a good grip on it. Get ready to support it. 
pull it straight back it'll slide off the shaft and it's probably 30 40 pounds it feels like completely doable it will want to drop transmission fluid out of the tail shaft on you so just be ready for that as well it's at this point that we'll finish disconnecting the transmission harness Take this lever right here turn it counterclockwise it will push the connector out at the same time it turns grab it by the ring and pull straight out we're also going to squeeze these two together here there's another one like it right up there right there and we need to do the same thing of two undo these two bolts they're 10 mil there's a bolt in here that is 10 mil as well those need to come out all your harnesses here you'll pull them off the brackets like so this one pops out and slides up sorry show you that again This one slides to the middle and pops off. That's all your lines, fuel lines. Underneath this 10 mil is another 10 mil bolt underneath this bracket. You'll need a deep well for that. Your transmission shift linkage should pop straight off, just like that. Next up is our starter wires. The ground cable here is a 13 millimeter nut. The signal wire is a 10 millimeter nut. And the positive power cable is another 13 millimeter nut behind this, behind this cover. Cover should be popped on like that. It's just a rubber plug, just pops right off. A flex head long handled ratchet and a semi deep 13 is the perfect mix to get into the positive terminal. Next we'll remove the three bolts holding the starter in. You'll need a 13 millimeter deep well for this one. There's one here on the side. There's one at the very top that is pretty hard to get to. Best solution I found is a total socket to wrench, socket face to back of ratchet face of six and a half inches will give you the clearance you need to reach past the starter for the top bolt without running into the engine bracket and the easiest way to get it in there is you're gonna have to fish it through the engine between the engine block and the starter like so you have to fish it up through and you have to take your hand on, on the passenger side of the starter, feel for the bolt, and stitch your socket on the bolt. I recommend that if your starter bolts were hard to remove, like these were, to chase the bell housing bolt holes and the threads of the bolts themselves with a tap and die or a thread chaser kit. It'll help you immensely when you go to put them back in. Now that you successfully defeated the starter, we're going to take off the cover for the bell housing. It's held in with two 13 millimeter bolts here and here. There's my light. There we go. That will drop this galvanized cover off and give you access to the flywheel. And we'll remove the flywheel, four flywheel bolts after that. Now that you've gotten the cover off, you can see one of the flywheel nuts right here. They are 15 millimeter. There are four of them under here. We'll go top side and show you what else you need to do to get these off. Now that we're top side, you'll need a 21 millimeter socket, a long handled ratchet to get onto your crank bolt. And you'll use this to rotate the crank and flywheel assembly to get those four nuts on the flywheel into position to where you can get them loose. This is where it's really helpful to have a second set of hands, but it can be done by yourself. It just takes a little bit more effort. All right, now that you've gotten those four 15 millimeter nuts off, we can go secure the transmission to the trans jack so that it doesn't fall off, keeps it nice and secure. 
and remove all of the 13 millimeter bolts. Sorry about that. 13 millimeter bolts all the way around the bell housing. At that point, the transmission will be separated from the engine with the exception of the studs passing through the flex plate. And you'll be able to remove the transmission by pulling backwards. Up here at the top of the transmission is a bolt that has a silver bracket attached to it, but holds a black bracket in place as well. When you go to put the transmission back in, make sure you don't trap the black bracket between the transmission bell housing and the engine block. It makes for a heck of a time trying to get it back out after you've already started some bolts on the transmission bell housing. Congratulations. Your transmission is now separated from your truck. You're now halfway done with the job. Now let's put it back together. Now that we are about to put the transmission in, you want to take your torque converter stud and get as close to in line as you can with the flywheel hole so you don't have to try and turn the torque converter or the flywheel to get everything lined up as you push the transmission up into place. 